Hi. In this video, we're going to work exclusively inside of our database tools. We've worked with a customer's table for a while now, and we have about, uh, looks like, nine different users. In this demonstration, I'm going to add a second table using My MySQL Workbench. We're going to tie those tables together with foreign keys and talk about the restrictions that you can set on incrementing and also on deleting. Then we're going to try to do some table joins. We're going to do select statements where we have the username plus the address that is associated with them. So let's get started here. So first of all, notice the name of our table or our, our database is ICA8. So we're going to need to know that. And we're going to launch MySQL Workbench. So I'm going to log in with my local account here, which is root and the password is root. And then I'm going to check to see if I have all the schema in here. And sure enough, ICA8 is listed there. So I want to uh, work with this uh, model right here. So let's, uh, let's start a new, um, what do you call it, a new model. And then for the name here, for some reason, it doesn't automatically synchronize like you want it to. So I need to go in here and type it in. ACA, in class activity, 8. And let's see if we can just press Enter, I guess. And close here and so now we've got the correct schema talking to this uh, this application so now I want to show these uh, see the see the tables in a diagram so let's go to database and choose reverse engineer and let's choose continue log in again and we're going to try to select the uh, ICA 8 which is already checked it looks like continue and continue and this is important. We're going to check this so it, it places these uh, tables on the diagram. So when you're all done, you should see a table here. So we've got customers. Now we want to add another table. So let's start working with these tools and the links to tie them together. So this button here says place a new table. And let's uh, name this thing. Let's say this is called the, uh, I'm going to use capital letters and call this as address. Let's go and add some column names. So the uh, ID is for the address. It's going to be an integer. I'm going to make a mistake on purpose and forget to put auto increment and not null. So we'll come back and fix that after we see an error. Let's give this thing a street. And let's see, what else do we have? We have a state. And let's call it a zip code. And then finally, I think we're done here. Let's uh, just close that. Now I want to tie these two together. So we're going to use the uh, one-to-many uh, relationship here. And I'm going to click it. Now, I'm not sure which one to click on first. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to click here and then over to here. And you can see that it's backwards because the one-to-many relationship is showing that each address has, one, has many customers. Now that might be true, but what I really want is the other way is that each customer can have many addresses. So let's just press delete and uh, here it is and try again. So let's use the same tool and this time click on the address column and then the customer and it goes the correct way this time. So this means that each customer can have many addresses and you can see a foreign key field has already been created called customer ID. So that looks like the diagram I'm, I'm expecting. So now I want to go look at the foreign key here on the address table. So let's double click an address and let's check it out. So this is listed as non-null, which is good. Let's go check out the foreign keys. So right now you can see that foreign keys is uh, got this item checked. On update is set to no action and so is delete. That's actually going to cause trouble, but we're going to leave these alone right now. So we'll intentionally cause an error later and see what that error does. So let's uh, go and save this model and then we'll uh, change it to, um, we'll uh, apply it to our, uh, our application. So, so I'm going to call mine person and address and save it. I overwrite uh, one that was already there. Now, I want to make this uh, actually affect the database. So if you chose forward engineer, that should work. However, on a Mac, it doesn't seem to respond to any mouse clicks. So I'll go to synchronize model instead. 
and synchronize model will apply these changes to my tables here. So let's log back into our database server and let's see how it goes. Let's double check here that make sure we're setting to our correct schema ICA8 and continue, continue again. And this diagram shows that customers is existing, but then there's going to be a new table added, which of course will be our addresses. Now, this screen here tells us what is going to be created. It says create table if it doesn't exist already. As I mentioned earlier that the constraints here on the foreign keys are going to cause troubles. So it says no action here then you're probably doing it wrong. So let's, uh, let's ex execute it and see what causes trouble now. Okay, so we should go into our, our application, um, my uh, admin, and let's take a look at our, our tables. So ICA8 is listed here. If I refresh, so customer shows, we got first name and last name and age. Let's go to addresses and let's check that out. So it's got all the fields that I created. Notice a little uh, key here, which means it's a foreign key. Let's go browse, and there are no addresses in the list. So now, let's say I want to give somebody an address. Let's click the insert, and let's try and give somebody an address. So I'm going to say he lives at 123 Main, and he lives in any town, and let's put him in Ohio. Now, which customer do we want to give this to? Well, let's say Jeff. Jeff Bezos lives in any town, and go. All right, so we have some problems. First of all, it says incorrect integer value for column ID at row one. It does say that one row was inserted. So let's go see what was inserted. But why did it do it incorrectly? So the ID for this address was set to zero. Hmm. We have a problem. Let's go look at our structure and see what that problem is. So the ID is supposed to be an uh, auto increment. So let's go and change this and scroll over to the right. And you can see that the A underscore I check mark is not there. So if we put it there, then we won't have any more trouble when we try to insert a new guy. So let's give somebody else an address. Uh, this person lives at 999 N Street. And he lives in um, so let's put him in Miami. Uh, let's see, that sounds like Florida. And let's go and assign this to Satya and go. All right, so this time we have uh, ID number two, green, there's no errors. So it looks to me like we have two different addresses set. Okay, I'm gonna create a few more addresses here so that we can test out a few things. Uh, what is this? It looks like I forgot the uh, street, cities. I don't. I didn't put a city in here. Huh? How about that? Well, that has to be fixed. Um, let's go with another address for the different person. Okay. So I've created. Uh, it looks like three. You might have a few more. So I've got customer six, nine, and four that own these. So Jack is number four, and who is number nine? Satya. So I'm going to take I'm going to take Jack Welch out of here. So let's go to customers, and let's go delete number four, which is Jack Welch. When I delete him, we're going to have an issue. It says here you cannot delete or update a parent row. Foreign key constraint fails. So the constraint is that there is no action allowed when you try to delete Jack because he has an address associated with him. So the only way to get rid of Jack Welch is to go delete the address first and then you can delete the user. So the um, foreign key constraint is not quite what I want. Let's go back into here into the uh, MySQL workbench and let's go make a modification here on the address table. So let's go back to foreign keys and for the, uh, for the customer ID, let's say on update and on delete, let's set it to cascade, which means if the user disappears, it will cascade delete the uh, current addresses associated with him. So let's uh, resynchronize our model and then try to delete Jack Welch again.
Okay, so you can see that the uh, update and, and delete are going to have cascade effects applied to them. All right, so now if we go into this database here, and uh, let's go back and take a look at the addresses again. Double check to see that they're still there. So Jack Welch has Maple Street associated with him. Now we're going to delete the customer called Jack Welch. And let's see if it'll let me do it this time. Here it is, number four. We try to delete. It says one row is affected. So the ID four is gone. Jack Welch has disappeared. Now the addresses. Let's check to see if it automatically deleted it. Yes, so customer ID six and nine both have an address, but four has been deleted. So that's the cascade option, which is going to be uh, helpful if that's, the, uh, if that's the behavior you want. So there's an example of a foreign key uh, restriction when it comes to uh, working on this database. Okay, so that sets up the database. In the next video, we're going to work with selecting. So if I want to show all addresses associated with each user, we're going to be doing selections and joins with the tables, but that'll come up in just a minute here.